Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Nelson, you're watching Nature Nell, and if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Today, I couldn't wait. I have to bring it to you right at the beginning of March because my What's in Blooms, there's so much back there that I've lost opportunities to show you guys because it's been bloom on top of bloom and some of them do last long. Some of them did make it through. So I said, let me just do it at the very beginning of the month so I can give you guys as many as I can before they start withering away. But either way, there's just so much. This is going to be a long one. So I'm not even going to take a lot of time here speaking and talking and chatting and blah, blah, blah. Let's go look at some blooms. All right, guys, we are blessed with a beautiful, beautiful morning. It is pretty early today. Uh, if I look sleepy head, that's why, because <laughs> I just got up. But anyway, I wanted to do this What's in Bloom because since February, it's just been crazy the amount of blooms that have been beginning to open. And I wanted to grab them right when they're fresh. So we're going to start right here in the beginning or the entrance of my shade house and workspace. These chocolate antler dendrobiums. Look at this. Remember I was saying this was all an experiment and I didn't know that this was living inside my quick tent, which is that little tent back there. And I brought it here out to the sun after seeing Maria's and Mercedes home visits, how they put their dendrobiums out. I was like, oh, I didn't know they get that big. And so look at it there. And this is the, the one I recently bought. If you guys been following me, uh, on my channel that I bought from Udeli's is the all yellow curly antler. And look, it really loves that spot. And it gets some sun here. I'll show you the, now it's perfect because it's hiding behind the clouds, but that's, it only gets this. It's, it's, it's around, I don't know, it's like nine o'clock. Yeah, it's around nine o'clock. I mean, the sun is shifting here. It's so weird how high the sun is already so early. But anyway, it is what it is, but the plants love it. And look at this Norma Jackson. If you guys remember, I got this at Redland show last year from Sierra Madre. Man, they always carry something special that I have to have. I bought this and a Cattleya uh, specimen that hasn't bloomed, but it's it took a while to acclimate, but now it's doing great. But look how beautiful this is and the amount of buds that it has coming let me see if i find a tag it's it's called a norma jackson i bought it i would say almost a year ago hold on guys let me see if i can since i have this large contraption now it's not as easy as the phone here you go that's the actual name and it was purchased in 2014 at the tamiami show and it's from hr nurseries and if you guys don't know who HR Nursery is. It's owned by Mr. Roy Takunaga, who created this beautiful flower here. And here's the name. Now this tag has the name wrong. It says, it says Tokuanga. His name is Tokunaga. And that is the actual name of this uh, dendrobium. But he is responsible for many, many hybrids. And what I've known, the common denominator in his hybrids is that they that they uh, bloom all at once and, and in abundance. I mean, and for a long, long time. You guys have been seeing this flower on my previous Wets and Blooms for a while. But I keep showing to show you guys how well, you know, his hybrids are. And I really have high respects for his hybrids. Now here, it just began to open. Do you guys remember the Wellington International Orchid Show? My God, were there amazing, amazing Cattleyas there. And this was from Pam from Orchids in Bloom. And this one has the most intense fragrance. It just started giving fragrance today. Here it is, Spring Fragrance Paradise. And it is definitely paradise. This orchid has an intense floral fragrance as well as being a gorgeous gorgeous uh, orchid and look all those new buds 
will eventually open and it'll be a beautiful display of flowers. I fell in love with the, with the labellum on this and the contrast of that soft, soft pinkish uh, pearl white. It was just perfect. And then when I smelled it, it was so pretty. And I realized that then I got this at Crawl Smith and the colors are very similar. <laughs> Check it out. So of course I had to put them together because it looks really cool together. And this dendrobium, it's Amatha, I can I have to read it to say it. Amethysta glossum. Dendrobium amethysta glossum. And from what I hear, this is a very strong bloomer. For you guys that like orchids that bloom a lot they say that this every year will give you more and more blooms so i'm looking forward to it it has a bunch here i did notice a little bit of a thrip problem right there and here so i immediately pulled out the the savine i've been talking about this a lot because it's very very um gentle on the you know on the plant and i mean don't go spraying it on yourself but it doesn't it won't harm it says it right there won't harm plants or blooms so don't spray it on your hands still wear your gloves but uh it's not as toxic is what i'm trying to say you don't have to wear a mask or anything like that it's just now i sprayed it today i also fed everything today it, and right at the beginning of the month i figured you know let's do it now it'll be easy for me to remember like when this month ends i'll i'll, put, I'll feed them again i'm not doing the weekly weekly thing anymore I did sort of like a weekly, monthly. <laughs> I did the wheat uh, uh, mixture of half a teaspoon instead of a full teaspoon of product in one gallon of water. And I'll explain it later. I'll do a little quick tutorial if we have time because there's so much. I showed this already. It is also from the Wellington. And it does have, surprisingly enough, it does have a tag. Hold on. Come on, Taggy doesn't even want to focus on my hand uh, it won't do it Hold on. there we go so this is from Ritter's Ritter I don't think it's Ritter's everybody says Ritter's but I only see it written Ritter orchids and it was one that I really wanted to have I have plenty of files you guys will see and up here I've covered this already still blooming guys still smells incredible at night i had to make a tag for this one because this was a gift brasavala nidosa it's a species and it is a heavy bloomer and for a long time now right here is my yellow bird this is one of my favorite it's just the yellow on this is so pretty and it's such a giving orchid this is from brethren's it's always giving beautiful beautiful uh, blooms as well as this one that is just happy here this I, I got recently at Udeli's at one of the shows how where I how we are I guess I say say lava burst Quanani and it has an award of merit from the American Orchidia Society <laughs> the AOS and look at that there's a reason why I got an award that is just absolutely beautiful. And by the way, I'm going to get more of these. And I'm gonna, and I finally figured out what I'm going to do with Roxana's, <laughs> Roxana's beautiful pot. I think I'm going to hang it here, Roxana. I'm going to put your, your beautiful pot right here in the entrance. But this is what I'm going to put because it won't cover your design. Everything else would cover it and the other stuff was too big. So I'm going to put a bunch of these. I think it's going to look absolutely beautiful. And since this area seems to be very popular for blooming, I think it's going to work out perfect. That's a perfect picture right there for the cover. Hmm. Smile girls. Click. <laughs> All right. This one, I don't have a tag yet. I do have the name. I'll put it underneath. It's gorgeous. I got this at the um, Crawlsmith tent at the show, at the Tamami show. And look how beautiful that is. It had two spikes, but still one going very strong. And it's a hybrid with a Rincon stylus, I believe. 
and I can't remember. I, I, I memorized it for a while and now I forgot again. And of course, the happy family, the one that I say that, I, oh, I've never seen this orchid before. So I have it here and I have three other ones in another pot. So it's a little obsessive. Now, now when I see them, I realize I do have you. It's just that you're so beautiful. I want to have you every time I see you. <laughs> that would make a good song. <laughs> I want to have you every time I see you. <laughs> it could be a little creepy though. <laughs> All right. This, my friends, I just did a potting on this and look how beautiful that has taken. You can see this plant is happy. And of course, now when I potted it, I told you guys after I would wet it, I start pulling it and exposing the bottom roots. See, let me show you. You never want to dig that under your medium. Now there are some cases, and I'll show you later, that it could be a little bit wonky. So you're going to have to kind of like figure it out. But overall, you want to keep it above the, the medium so it doesn't get root rot. But look how beautiful that is. And this is the Dick Smith Paradise. I think that's the name. And it smells so delicious, guys. It is pure pure candy and this comes from none other than my friend Vicky's orchid who is killing it at the shows she is bringing some amazing quality orchids beautiful stuff very very pretty and her prices are just just very fair I really, I'm really admiring how far she's come from when I first met her, this no name little nursery and she's doing the big shows now and she's really standing out. She's bringing some great, great stuff. And this is the Dendrobium kingianum, it's a species. And this was, I believe, a gift from Maria. Tu me regalaste esto. Yo creo que tu me regalaste esto. Este es el kingianum. She had a bunch of them and she told me, here, I'm gonna give you one of these and look, it gave me three and I couldn't remember I was like when did I get this I couldn't remember at all I was like I don't recall getting this and I started thinking well maybe it was a gift and then it hit me and I go it was the Maria's visit because she had a storm come in and a bunch of things just kind of fell out and so she says look just take these and maybe you can save them so she gave me a bunch of vanillas and this is gorgeous this was a gift from Terry to me and it was the perfect, perfect orchid for this pot that I got from my buddy at the Orchid Den from Josh. That's the name of this orchid. It's just a weird name. And I, honestly, I don't care to learn it right now. I will someday. <laughs> it's just right now, I don't care to learn it. I don't know if that happens to you guys. It's like, you know what? I'll learn it later. And then, oh, how can I skip over my beautiful Tulumias? Look, they're doing, they're doing good. I don't think, I don't think, um, cause this is an experiment guys. I've, I've killed too many Tulumias and I hear it's a common thing that happens. By the way, here, let me see if I can take the tag. I don't know why I put it so deep. I didn't want to lose it, that's why. Oh, it focused so quickly, the quail eggs. So anyway, it looks like it's happy. It has a lot of new growth in there. If you look, hold on. Uh, yeah, you can kind of see it. There's new growth happening all inside. So I figured it looks like it's happy. I don't really wet it that much. It just gets the overspray from the other um, orchids, but I don't really go crazy. Oh wait, let me, I don't want to spin too fast because I notice on TV when I look back at it to see how the angles are and stuff like that, to make things better every time and be aware of the things that I may be doing that could be a little bit dizzy. <laughs> And that sometimes I turn too fast. This beautiful Cymbidium comes from Coral Smith. It's one of their award-winning um, orchids. This one got the highest award in FCC by the American Orchid Society. It's the Emerald Fire. And I am so happy that I got this. I got this about, I think it was my anniversary at Fairchild, yes. And I got it at their tent. And these are pretty pricey, but man, are they worth it. It is one incredible cymbidium and it's very it, it gives you a lot of flowers look that's not the only thing. it has two more spikes back here about to open i should spray it just in case it looks really good but i should just spray it with sabine 
just to make sure that nothing attacks it. But look how gorgeous that is. And of course, need I say the color? It's absolutely stunning. So boys at Carl Smith, congratulations. This is a fine, fine, fine orchid. It really is beautiful. When I saw it spiking, I just went crazy for it. I was like, oh my God. Because it had spiked for me once before, but it gave me two spikes and the second one was kind of weak. But this one actually, it lost a couple. It has five spikes in total right now, but it lost like three spikes, but it's okay. It's a lot for a little girl like this. She's still growing. <laughs> and then my Josephine Vambrero, the actual JVB, because you usually see this hybridized with something else, like the one up here. I'll show you. They, they use, it's so funny, they usually bloom together. This is a hybrid with a Kowati fragrance. What? I'm not that high up, I can show you guys. See? So that's a hybrid with the one I just showed you. And they're both from Moats. Look how pretty, it's such a beautiful flower. You know what? I always forget to show you guys. These I won't show you because these are just to, um, starting to acclimate. So those flowers came already with the, uh, I think some more mocaras and arandas. Look at this, how gorgeous. This is also from Moats. Now, I don't know what this is hybridized with. I don't know what this, it, it's definitely a JVB mixed with something else but I don't know what it is. And it's the first time it blooms. It's a, it, it, it's a very big Vanda. When I first got it, it was one of those tiny ones that you buy three for, I think they're three for 75 or three for, it's, it's a great deal. It's a really good deal. And so I always at the shows, I like to buy the three like these. See, they start, these are already about a year old and look how much they've grown. They were tinier than that. And it's bloomed, this one has bloomed twice. And this one, first time blooming. Now you wanna see something crazy? Check this out. Papillon, oh, sorry, Papillonanda, Dr. Benjamin Chu. Okay, that, that orchid is a Josephine Vambrero with Kaluwadi fragrance, which is the same exact thing I just showed you on the other side. But look how different this one came out. It's more pink. It has the same a uh, freckle pattern and the same kind of like, but it's it's just a little bit, it, it's a lot more pink and almost like bubble gum. It's beautiful. So just cause you buy the same plant, if it looks different guys, that means it was a seedling. It means that it was cultivated or grown as a seedling. So you get different variations of that hybrid, but it doesn't make it any less prettier sometimes the one that comes out completely different is the prettiest one and this my friends is just breathtaking i don't know if you guys have seen this before but this is a very famous vanda violetta they're known for shooting up very long canes these were very tiny these were about this size they were given to me by my buddy ben over at banyang I went with Laz one day to um, to go film and just shops for some things and they were cutting back this am amazing massive specimen and they had a lot of little pieces and he says here you I want you to take them and put them on your tree so three years later or almost three years later I would say about two years later two and a half because yeah, it was right after the pandemic um, this is what I have how much it's grown and some of these are keikis that it gave me like this wasn't here this one back here that's that grew here so if you have the trees sometimes it's fun just to put them because they will add color to your yard and if even just standing here i see that over there and that over there so when you're here you 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 get blasted in the face with different tones different colors 
and it inspires you to add more which i do want to add more i had told blanca i go you know you're so lucky your flower your orchids do well on your trees she was well why not on yours and i'm like i don't know they just don't and as soon as i said that it was like an explosion <laughs> oh by the way congratulations to lewis he he had a crazy mess here and he fixed all this to make it practical for him to do gardening and working we cleaned this out. We still have to throw some things away because it was a lot of work. So we we put all these wood pieces aligned. These are Florida pine from a gazebo from a friend's house. And this you can't get anywhere. So we're like, we'll take it, we'll recycle it. And so we redid this. It was like building pyramids. These things are so heavy, massively, massively heavy. It's like if it were concrete. But Lewis and I were able to do it with cinder blocks and, and hard bars. We were like lifting it up, seesawing it until we finally created what we wanted, which was a stadium seating effect going into this tree. And then this avocado tree, I'm going to cut it down and turn it into a bonsai avocado tree, like the shape, to continue the bonsais here that I, that I, because I love bonsais and I, I needed a place for them. So, uh, let me move this here. So I'm starting to re-bring these because during the cold weather, they drop all their leaves and they look god awful. And then here we put all my Schimberkias. They love it here. It's a lot of sun. Look at this Louise Fuchs. Mirmur Kofula Cattleya. I can't say it. It's, it's a Schimberkia with Cattleya a cross, I believe. And this is a beautiful, beautiful flower hybridized by none other than the Fuchs family, which is RF, RF Orchids. And it was named after his grandmother, Robert Fuchs. So it's a really beautiful, oh, and it's so fragrant. The fragrance on it, it is absolutely incredible. Let's take a little, little stop here, just real quickly. I have so much to show, oh my God. It's gonna be a long, long video. But you know what? You guys have been requesting <laughs> longer videos. I'm like, how long do you want them? They're already like an hour. But anyways, my arachnus is still out of control. She is like having a party up there. She's not inviting anybody. And it's just the party's getting bigger and bigger. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna have to cut some of these uh, mango uh, branches off so I can admire them, but my experiment guys that i told you guys i was gonna do and i risked it and it worked i started cutting randomly because these things are are like once they attach here they root all the way up so wherever you cut it it still has roots so look i cut here there's a new growth let's see i cut here there's a new growth and by the way in that new growth a new spike comes out because i've noticed that happen to like 95% of them last time, I cut two or three testing it out and it worked. I'm looking here, I cut here, this one in the back, I didn't even think it was gonna make it and there's a new growth. So now you're gonna start seeing in spring and maybe even summer, you're gonna start seeing this, you're gonna start seeing more spikes coming out from the center because I was thinking it's all coming out from the top because Everything is, is new growth up there. What if I cut everything on the bottom and recreate the new growth and then it'll just fill up. So I'm already starting to see new spikes coming out. So very, very excited about that because I thought I literally like, I, I, when I first did it, I'm like, maybe I just massacred everything. <laughs> and yes, the Ingrecum Crestwood, still in full bloom, guys. It's been months. <laughs> And still, the fragrance at night is just ridiculously delicious. And by the way, if you guys have these, I've had this for many years. This comes from Pam's Orchids in Bloom as well. I water here. They're very, very sensitive to fungus. So you don't want, always check here. You don't want to see black spots or dots or anything. You want to keep it green, seriously. So water down there only. Don't go crazy watering up here. Unless you're doing like a feeding or something that requires to water the leaves, then and in, I would suggest to do it really early in the morning. Now, this I got from my buddy Tan from Springwater Orchids. And I'm sorry for, 
For the dusty leaves, I did feed today, and today was one of those days that I had to feed all the leaves because it had Epsom salt, and I want, you know, the cold weather makes everything kind of yellowish, and I need to bring back some color so I can keep it green. And so the downside is that it has that, it'll, it'll fall off after a while, but it has that, you know, it's a salt and, and all the feeding. But this is a gorgeous, gorgeous species. I may put the name in the bottom. I'm trying to remember because I did lose a tag. Is it Trichoglottis orchidea? I know it's orchidea, but I don't know if I, I the, I'm almost positive it's Trichoglottis because my mind wants to say Trichocentrum, but I believe it's Trichoglottis orchidea. And look how beautiful those tiny, tiny look. How small they are. They're so tiny. I'm trying to stretch up <laughs> my neck. <laughs> Such tiny flowers, but beautiful. They're non-fragrant. My camera's having trouble. For it's really small, but I'm amazed it, it captured this clearly. It's just a gorgeous piece. And I got this years ago when I first started doing this channel, three years ago. I, um, I think it was the second day. If you guys go back to that episode, the second day, I believe it is, because the first episode I went thinking it was a day of the show and it wasn't. So I did a setup day and then the following day I did another one and I think I showcased, the, showcased this on the second day and I bought it from Ton. And that's the first time I met Ton. <laughs> Three years ago. And look how gorgeous is doing. So here I'm going to try to skip over the ones I've already shown, but this I have not look at this beauty she is right now at her prime where every single flower is fresh it's clean because they do start withering away from the bottom as they grow at the top but look at that is that not a work of art from nature it's called a nun's orchid I'm trying to remember actually the the actual name and I'm drawing a blank. Aphias, Aphias, sorry. It's Aphias orchid. But it's just every year she loves to show off with all these flowers. And now for the obvious reasons, that's why it's called a nun's orchid. Or nun I, I believe it's nun caps orchid or nun's orchid. I think it's both. Either one is correct. Because they look like the old nuns caps when they would fold down but it is a stunning stunning orchid and i've had this now oh i don't know i've had it now for about three years maybe yeah probably around when when i started the channel as well and she's doing well now these cutie patooties here are from curl smith i got these at the last show they did in in uh in november which, by the way, their spring show is coming up now in April, right on my birthday weekend. So it's going to be a party. <laughs> this came last year because I want to do a project. And the project is all these here are the same. Here's the name of the, it's a, a, an easy name, by the way. Crawls Happy Happy. We have Happy Family and Happy Happy. <laughs> so anyways, this is such a unique flower. It's like a candy color and very brilliant. Gives off a beautiful, sophisticated fragrance. I can smell it from here, actually. Very, very, very pretty fragrance. So I'm going to put all those on that cone that I have. Let me see if I can tidy back there. That cone I have back there. But it has a lot of sheath that are, you know, that it's been opening and I really don't want to tamper with it right now. I sometimes do if I find that the pot is just too small and it's, it's toppling over and I want to protect the plant. But other than that, I try not to let it acclimate as well as much as possible. This is also from Carl Smith. <laughs> and this is a Napaldii. Um, is it Napaldii Kawadi too? I'll look at it now. But look what a beautiful pink this is is that not the most bubblegum pink you've ever seen before they have these on their shows a lot it's a very strong bloomer 
when it gives you sometimes it gives you two spikes and it's just breathtaking to see two massive because it's a very big flower and as it ages it gets bigger and bigger look at that and it's a it's a big vanda these are one of the big ones here let me see napoldi napoldi de napodle there we go <laughs> napodle delight crawls thailand and it has an award of merit I do love to buy the ones that have a award of, of merit or any kind of award because I've noticed that they are stronger plants. You know, they come from uh, from the mother plant. They are strong. The flowers last longer. They're beautiful. They look like they're ready for a show. You know, it's just a very. And by the way, you can do it with this one because this one is a, a ruffled type of edging. But if you want to show, let me see. Uh, this is a quick little. These are already going, but. If you want to show your your papio petals at a show, flip the the petals inwards like this to where it cups like that, and see how pretty that looks. It looks much prettier than if it's you know kind of like pulling back. Not all you can do that with. Like you can't do it with this. This is this is just a, the shape of this flower. So if you try to do it, this is going to go backwards and you're going to hurt it. But anyways, we're not going to focus on that flower because I have shown it many times before. But I haven't really shown this beautiful sea breeze. Here's a gorgeous sea breeze, Hawaii. Also got this from my buddy Tang at Spring Waters. And I got this over at Carl Smith when they were having their uh, November show about two years ago. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. Sometimes it does bloom a lot more than this, but this time it shows to bloom sporadically. Like it bloomed on the other side and it, it kind of like gave my, these blooms in a weird location. So I had to hang this like that. But it is, sorry. It is really a gorgeous, gorgeous flower. And it neighbors so well within the pottle. <laughs> and then next to here is my pride and joy guys look at this la Malata. this is also from carl smith it's the first time it blooms for me i believe it did bloom once before but it, it's because it came with the spikes but it is absolutely beautiful this is an oiko or oiko or something like that hold on let me i'm trying to be conscientious of how i move my camera because when i go too fast okinawa <laughs> But it's just a beautiful, beautiful flower. So, so pretty. When I saw the three spikes, of course, I started, oops, I just bumped into a, a ground orchid. I was so protective of it. I was, no, you gotta, you gotta give me all three spikes. You know, you start thinking about, well, what if it gets thrips? That's it, there's one spike that goes. So I sprayed it with Savine to make sure, just in case. <laughs> and look, it made it, it made it very well and every single flower opened. And the plant itself looks great. Again, you buy quality orchids, you get quality results, plain and simple. I have bought orchids in the past that were very, very, very too good to be true type of thing. And bring it home and find out it has a virus so sometimes you got to do your research and make sure you're getting something that is quality and that uh, might not introduce anything into your own collection and if you're going to introduce something you introduce this orchid from j and j unique orchids this is one of the most spectacular vandas i have here and to show you, it has a new growth. And that's, look, all the previous in there. I, I cut them kind of short inside because I hate to see those little wood things, <laughs> my OCD. But it's given me, since I bought this, it's given me so many blooms. It's such an, a generous um, orchid. You see, I'm trying to find, oh, here it is. You know, when I'm looking through the camera, instead of looking beyond the camera, that's the name of that amazing orchid. And it does have 
an AOS uh, award. I don't know exactly what it is, but he did tell me. When I saw this, it had a, an amazing ribbon, a blue ribbon. It had all these awards and I go, I need to have that. So I bought one of the, the clones. And then this one is still blooming. And look at the richness of that cranberry and yellow. Talk about cranberry and yellow, that's cranberry and yellow. And this is my Trichocentrum, which I don't know because this was a gift from some friends of mine that took over a very um, popular orchid growers uh, collection. And so when they moved out, they gave me this as a gift. They gave me several of them. There's another one up there. And they are so unique. So, so unique. And I heard that this grower was very cool at what he crossed. So anyways, here we have these gorgeous untagged. <laughs> I've looked for, I, I've, I've gotten the name of this online, but um, I don't know if it's a Mokara or, or an Aranda or an Ascascenda. Ascascenda, I think that's what it is. But don't get, don't get, don't take my word for it on that one. <laughs> All right, let's move. Oh, I'm sorry, Zena. Let's go up here. I always overlook you. And you're such a beautiful flower and your fragrance is so incredible. Oh, there's Bruce trying to get attention, my cat. This is a Zena, it's from Banyang and guys, this flower is, let me take a little, little whiff. It is so, so delicious. There's a spiciness and a floralness to it that it's just, you wanna like shove it up your nose, like I say, and just keep it in there all day. <laughs> it's so pretty. And it's, I don't have a tag, but it's easy. Z, Z, X, E, N, A, that's it. Vanda Zena, X, E, N, A. No need to show a tag for that. All right, now let's go see the mother load, which she did get a little bit wind damaged and I it, it really hurt me, but it still looks beautiful. Ladicia bicolor. I think I'm saying that correct. I always say it wrong. Look how beautiful. This was a gift from Mercedes. Mira, Mercedes, esta es la que me regalaste. Pero el peso se le fue para abajo. Le voy a conseguir una maceta más grande. Also, the weight of the plant pulled down because it's so, it's a tiny pot. See? So I'm going to find, I've, I've been looking for a nice pot for this. But the plant itself is beautiful. It's very healthy and looking gorgeous. So I just need to get the right pot, but look how pretty that is. It's, it's pretty like that either way. The flowers are adorable. It's like a little spray of, of bridal flowers. Very, very beautiful. Nothing else is, is blooming here. This is where I work. I have my bike in here now. So I work here in this area and I, I do all my mixing and all that. So right now, nothing. This is the only thing I think it's new growth or it's a spike. And that was a gift from Mike uh, Mims from Blue Ridge Orchids. And I can't remember the name, it has a tag, but guys, I'm not gonna go back there. I always hit my head. <laughs> if, if, oh, I almost stepped on, look. It's a good thing I'm always looking down. This is Patrick, my oldest cat here. He's my, my senior. Hey, buddy. Buddy, you're, you're like looking to, to use up all your nine lives by just laying in front of the walkway. <laughs> oh my God. I'm always looking down because there's always a cat around here. So I truly like, it's happened that I've stepped on him. Now I wear these kind of shoes. So it's very soft and it's not gonna break their paws or anything. It's just gonna, it's gonna hurt a little and scare them, but I don't wear like hard shoes. I wear comfortable shoes. Now, are you guys ready for the explosion? Ooh, it's very fragrant in here right now. Look at all the fowls that are, and all the spikes. My Shilly Rihanna is ready to start opening. I have most of my bulbophyllums here. 
some more files. I'm showing you overall right now, but I'll focus now. Now this just started to open. This is one of Brethren's personal collection. So Philip told me, I believe we were at the Redland show and he had it there. And I was like, that's a gorgeous foul. He goes, yeah, I had to clear out some of my own, my, my own stuff to let other things in, you know, they have award winning and prize winning things, but nonetheless, if this is part of their collection, it's a great orchid because they're only going to choose the best of the best. And sure enough, it definitely is the best of the best. Look at that. This literally just started opening like two days ago, all at the same time. It's crazy. And it has a gorgeous color. Back here, look, look how big this leaf is. <laughs> These leaves are mammoth. It does have Gigantia in it. This one's also starting to open. And this, this is a, this is the place. Brethren orchids. And that is Gigantia and Violacea indigo. So it's a gorgeous, gorgeous mix. I think I paid, my God, I don't remember what I paid. I paid a hundred maybe for this. It was pricey, but you know, you're getting their own personal stuff. So, you know, you're getting something unique and very different. I'm in love with it. This is the first time it blooms like this for me. I was a little worried because since I bought it, it hadn't bloomed and all of a sudden it just shot all these spikes and i decided to put the the spikes upwards slowly and carefully sometimes you can't just do it all again so you have to train it until it connects or just leave it like that because i really want to see the flower i don't want to miss out on the the, the flower when the sun goes out it focuses better and then next to it from cruel smith is my beautiful tejas giant look at what a beauty isn't that amazing guys i couldn't wait for all these buds to open and i kept on telling you guys maybe next month maybe next week it, it was it took forever but good things come to those who wait and i waited and this is a good thing <laughs> very fragrant foul by the way it may not be for everybody it's not a it's nice when you're not up close to it because it's soft right it's the fragrance lingers and it's nice but when you go up to it it's like like you know like sticking your nose inside the bottle of a cologne even if it smells good if you do that it might be too potent and that's the problem with this flower it's so incredibly pungent that from far away is okay from up close is nope <laughs> don't do it it's a little too much but it, it's a beautiful beautiful file and i almost lost this one this is one of my success stories i had only two leaves it's a i think i got it right before i started the channel or maybe right yep right before i started the channel so it's about a three and a half year old plant and it was doing great and then i decided to do something stupid and replant it on a mount and she it was just two leaves like these two leaves left and I'm like, oh my God. So I repotted it in spag moss, New Zealand spag moss. I always put on the bottom styrofoam bits just so it has extra drainage. You don't want your fowls to stay too, too wet even though they do like the wet environment. Um, that's a good balance. You know, use spag moss, but also coat the bottom with um, styrofoam bits or packing bits. And these are all files that I've been collecting from MS Orchid, most of them. I know these are all theirs. And MS Orchids is down here in Chrome. They are literally on Chrome Avenue in the Redland Homestead area. It's actually more Redland, Kendall, sort of. It's not Homestead at all. But um, they have the most amazing, beautiful, beautiful orchids. This one, though, is from Udeli's who is also on Chrome. So that's why if you guys plan on visiting Miami, you can visit all these 
Uh, and now J and J uh, Landscape and Orchids, they're also on Chrome, very close to MS. So it's almost like a, a, a parade of orchid houses that you can go one after another, and it's convenient because you don't have to drive that far. You get it all in one, and then you got to get a car that's big if you're going to rent one because. <laughs> If you're driving down to Miami from, let's say, upstate Florida or Georgia or any any part of the West Coast, uh, not West Coast, East Coast, <laughs> uh, West Coast would be quite a quite a drive. Um, you would need a bigger car because there's so much here to buy and to get and things you've never seen before. Look at this one. This one I got at a Heavenly Garden, which also is on Chrome, very close to everybody else. But look at the size of this fowl. Look at the leaves on that. It's just massive. This, I found out, it's from too much feeding. So that's why I'm not doing every week, even if it's weekly. I'm going to do monthly, and I think it's more than enough. So this flower is starting to open. This will last for months and months on end. And it's a very, very thick spike. So it's strong. You don't even need to spike it. This one, I don't know, because it has a lot more branches than ever before. Once all those blooms open, it's going to cause weight. And then above it, it's the beautiful Shiluriana, which has a gorgeous flower, but it will not open yet. It's going to be a couple of, I would say maybe a couple of days. And back there, my Tetraspis, ready to bust out. And then the rest of all these gorgeous fowls. I mean the colors. I love this one. I'm in love with that one. And then this one has amazing fragrance. I bought this for I think $25 at um this whole family, this is what they do. Joseph Wu Orchids. They do these Paloric type of orchids. That's the name of this one. See, it says Paloric there. And Terry and I bought a, a couple of different ones from them. And I got to tell you, their flowers are so beautiful. Now, I'm going to show you something. If you guys see this, it's a good example. You see that and that? I'm gonna wait now till this dries out because it may be a little too much water for it and you don't wanna get crown rot. So I'm gonna see if by not, and it, it really isn't that wet, it's moist, but you wanna keep an eye on your leaves and make sure, like this is just regular weather spotting right here. Oh my God, everything has so much of that salt and so that's just weathering, but other than that, you know, you don't want to get those dots and that could be a cause of too much water. And I haven't really been watering much in here, to tell you the truth. This is beautiful. This is probably one of my favorite ones in here. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous spotted red. And the, the background will turn more yellow as it ages. Really pretty. And look at the health of the leaves, guys. That's what you want to look at. You always want to keep your leaves green and plump. You don't want to, you don't want to see yellow. If you do see yellow, let it be the bottom leaf, like um, th these leaves. That's okay. That's just moving. It's almost like a snake shedding its skin. So it's okay. They can do that. It's just you don't want to see upper leaves. That means there's something wrong. And then this is just like, it doesn't even look like a standard foul anymore. <laughs> It's absolutely beautiful. And guys, these are called standard fowls, right? These are the ones you see um, in shows and things like that. You see them everywhere. Of course, these are these are hand selected that I that I pick from specialized places like MS Orchid. So it may like this. You can see in a lot of places. You'll see this a lot, but you won't see this in many places. You won't see this. Well, now I'm seeing more of these. Right, you won't see this in many places. So, if you want like a specialty standard, 
uh, go to nurseries that focus mainly on that and you'll find it like a heavenly garden is also another one this is where I got this and this I haven't seen this anywhere this massively large and New Delhi's had this which is a spectacular combination of pinks and yellows with a crazy labellum that lip is just gorgeous so these are called um oh my god are they novelty no no not novelty uh yeah novelty novelty fowls novelty fowls some people call them signature fowls but i've heard more novelty fowls all right i think we're done here let me go to the front i'm not gonna film me walking all the way over there because we just see it's no use i mean i know you guys want to see the whole yard and blah 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 but you know what i will show you <laughs> i was talking about it in my in the wellington international orchid show with hiko do you guys remember the bonsai that i unfortunately had to mute because of the radio and i told him your lychee tree look how big the lychee tree has gotten it was a branch when i bought it from him i think i paid 50 dollars, and he he told me i promise you that it will give you a lot of fruit because it comes from a branch that gave a lot of fruits. And he was not kidding. <laughs> There's so many, even the low branches, look. So, Chico's lychee um, crops are amazing. They are the type of lychee that has a really, really tiny, tiny seed flat and it's slightly bigger than the normal lychee so it's way more juicier and it has a uh, very sweet flavor to it he gave me some when i bought it he goes i have some here from that same tree and i was like i want that i want to grow that in my yard and it is absolutely spectacular i don't really show you guys much of the crops and stuff but now that the season is in it's happening i can't wait peachy is one of my favorite fruits all right i'll see you on the other side i cannot bypass my areca these are probably my oldest of orchids on trees this is when i started watching i think blanca's videos like four or five years ago and laz and i we started that one back there is from laz we started hanging stuff here and on my birthday he gave me this one. Oh, there's Jackson right behind there. Papa! He's so spoiled. He sees me, he wants to be around me. Right, Papa? I know, Papa. I'll be inside in a little bit. Yeah, he's very needy. So maybe I make them needy. <laughs> come, come to think about it. <laughs> I spoil them too much. But anyways, this is called, I think, a kaleidoscope fowl and Laz gave me this for my birthday and that was the very I think was the very first that I ever hung on this tree and it did so well that it encouraged me to do all these others and these actually come from BJ's <laughs> I started buying them at BJ's and they were so pretty and different and they little did I know and that one down there is also now the leaves do get a little bit worn out but it's a small price to pay now i definitely had to come and show you guys this amazing beautiful dendrobium shares dream named after his um i guess favorite celebrity from mr dave at morning dove nursery who made that beautiful white bench that you guys saw in my yard he cultivated these he has hundreds of these in his property and I did a home visit to showcase them and he gave me this piece right here. And it has a little bit of everything. It has Schomburgia, it has uh, Oncidium. He goes, I like to mix them all in. And, and it's true, it looks good when they're all mixed. But look at how many incredible flowers it's given. Is that not spectacular? And that's not all, it has, it has new growth coming out and it has all these spikes. I don't know if you can see it there.
And then you have the Oncidiums here. All these come from Mercedes. Mercedes, tú me regalaste todas estas Oncidiums. Y mira que bien están. Están bien. They're so tight. I'm telling her that um, todas estas de aquí para arriba y allá atrás también. Otra. She gave me a couple of these. And look, mira. They are so tight on there. They have rooted completely. So I can't wait because those are very yellow. And again, this beautiful fuchsia and pink. This is going to be a spectacular show. Now, I'm going to show this because it's very sad, but I don't know why this happened. And Mercedes was asking me, How, how's the vanilla doing the one I gave you? And I said, I don't know. Look what happened. It got cut off here. I don't know what, and it has to be like buried here. But this one gave me a baby and the baby's coming out here, but then look at the leaves. So I'm going to tell her in Spanish because I know she watches. Mira Mercedes, esto fue lo que te expliqué. Ella estaba creciendo muy bien hasta aquí arriba y se cortó aquí, no sé con qué, pero me, me dio un bebito, pero mira cómo está la, la hoja. Así que no sé si ella va a poder ahí. I don't know if she's going to make it there or not, but sometimes you just got to let him be. But here, this took off really well. These bromeliads given to me by Mr. Dave as well. He has all sorts of bromeliads in his yard. It's incredible. And he, um, he has them for many, 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 many years. He says from a friend of his that used to, I think, be a curator for Fairchild's. And they had, he, the, the guy had an abundance of bromeliads and those things can grow like crazy. And he told them, I'll give them to you because I know you can take care of them. They're just way too many. And so years later, he has too many. <laughs> so he's giving away some to me, but they are beautiful. And then here's another one of those fowls from BJ's. BJ's is like a Costco, guys. If you guys know what Costco is? It's like a big warehouse type of market. And there's more spikes there. It's that kind of, uh, you know, big box market <laughs> all right i think that's it i'm not gonna prolong this because this is a long one but you guys see why it was an explosion i think this is one of the better ones i've shown with blooms and i believe spring is gonna be even better than this so let's turn this puppy around all right, that is it. And it is, ooh, it's so sunny, it's bright. <laughs> I didn't realize it was gonna be this sunny. The, it was covered by a cloud, so it felt comfortable. But anyways, guys, I'll deal with the sun. I can't even see myself on the monitor, so I don't even know if I'm in the center. <laughs> so anyways, I hope you loved this What's in Bloom because I was so, so happy to, I, it's, it wasn't just the blooms. I wanted to show you what we did out here, what we're planning to do in the future. I gave you a little hint, a bunch of hints throughout the garden of what I want to do, but I haven't, I haven't given away the surprise yet. It'll be, it'll come, it'll come probably summer or late summer if all goes well. But anyways, that's in the making. And uh, there's a lot more things happening, you know, that I'll be sharing with you guys. Now, as I always do, at the very end of this episode, I will put flashes of advertisements for shows that are coming up that I know around my area, I can't put every single show. It's, it would be too, too long. So I put the ones that are relatable to me and that I know and that I've visited or that I'm aware of, and then I'll just put them out there for you guys to see if you can make it to those shows. So anyways, let me see, what else do we have that I haven't said? I can't think of anything. The show in Apopka, April 4, 5, no, 5, 6, and 7. I believe it is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I am planning to go um, early. I wanna, I wanna get some recording done early before I start meeting you guys because I know it's gonna be a party weekend. <laughs> so I'll be there early in the morning. <laughs> and uh, what else? There's other shows, but I think that's it. No need to say more. So thank you for stopping, for sticking by to the very end. If you stay to the very end. Thank you, you guys have given to Super Thanks. Very, very kind of you. You know, the channel, this channel, it, it is funded. It, it, it is monetized, for uh, lack of a better word. It is monetized. And for us YouTubers, for every ad that plays, uh, if you guys skip, we kind of lose on that. 
uh, people who are members of YouTube, which actually I'm thinking of becoming one because it's much easier and I hate to watch those ads. It's like, I don't know, I think it's $9 a month or something like that, but you don't see any ads and then automatically some of those funds come to us. So it helps us offset a lot of the gas. I mean, I, I do a lot, a lot of traveling in my car. Look, the tree's saying hello. A lot of traveling, a lot of gas, a lot of food, hotels. It's, it's a package and all the planning. Plus I gotta take days off of work, which means I don't make money. So when you guys donate, when you guys watch, just simply watching my videos, you are helping me be able to do more of this. So I'm the kind of person that I reinvest back in the videos and you guys see it. You always see how I'm always improving and trying to make it better and better. So I always like to share this with you because I wear my heart on my sleeve and I'm not gonna hide a thing about this channel. I didn't do it in the beginning and I'm not gonna do it now. So anyways, I will see you in the next episode. My name is Nelson. You've been watching Nature Now and remember to always, always keep it green. I will see you next time.